In this model, we can see the intestines very well. This part that we are seeing here is what connects to the stomach. So we would find the pyloric sphincter between the stomach, that we cannot see in this model, and the first segment of the small intestine, which is named duodenum. So this is the duodenum. After the duodenum, we have the jejunum and the ileum. So remember, we are basically having a line at the middle here, and the top part will be named jejunum, and the bottom part will be named ileum. And you remember the order because you say D, J, ileum, and D is for duodenum, J for jejunum, and the last one is the ileum. Now, the ileum is the part of the small intestine that connects with the large intestine. And the first part of the large intestine is named cecum. So, to block the things that are within the large intestine, such as E. coli, to go into the small intestine, the ileum, we have a valve. And this valve is named ileocecal valve, is a valve between the ileum and the cecum. So if you look here, you can see that you have a valve literally going this direction because it's a valve between the ileum and the cecum. Now, if we look at this in this view, you can see that we have a little hole here, but this hole is not the ileocecal valve. This hole is the entrance or the appendix. And this is the appendix. So the appendix is at the level of the cecum, which is the first part of the large intestine. Consequently, after the cecum right here, we have the ascending colon, the transverse colon, and then lastly, we have the descending colon. Now, what happens is that if you get a picture with this view, you need to remember that the appendix is at the beginning of the large intestine. Consequently, if you have an arrow pointing right here and you see the appendix here, this will be the ascending colon because this is the cecum and the first one is the ascending colon because whatever is in the cecum will ascend. So this is the ascending colon. And then lastly, you have this one, the descending colon. After the descending colon that we can see in the other model, then comes the sigmoid colon. And the sigmoid colon is this part of the colon that looks like a letter S, so it's very easy to remember. And after the sigmoid colon, then we have the rectum. And the rectum, which is this part that goes straight down, rectum, is ending in the anus. And in the anus, we have the internal anal sphincter, which is internally located in relationship to the external anal sphincter. The external anal sphincter surrounds the internal anal sphincter. And the external anal sphincter is the one that's made up of skeletal muscle, so we have conscious control over it. And the internal anal sphincter is made up of smooth muscle, which means that we cannot consciously control. So it makes sense because if you have control over the external anal sphincter, when we contract the external anal sphincter, we can squeeze the internal anal sphincter and nothing gets out of the rectum.